Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for being here uh, as we continue to prepare for the arrival of Hurricane Zeta. As you all re will recall, I declared an emergency on Monday. Uh, yesterday, we requested from the president a pre-landfall federal disaster declaration, which he granted uh, yesterday evening. Uh, and I want to say how appreciative we are for that quick response. Um, and it allows us to uh, receive uh, direct federal assistance if necessary, but also to engage in, in the full measure of category B as it relates to uh, protective measures. Uh, I do want to welcome back to Baton Rouge FEMA Region 6 Administrator Tony Robinson. Uh, you all have seen him here with us a lot uh, over the last uh, several months and it's good to have him back. Uh, the reason we moved this press conference from three to one is because overnight Hurricane Zeta uh, both began strengthening beyond what was forecasted but also accelerated its forward speed and so the timeline uh, was condensed. And so we thought rather than waiting till three o'clock, we needed to come and have this press conference earlier. So now Hurricane Zeta is expected to make landfall sometime uh, this afternoon. Um, in landfall, don't know exactly where, but somewhere along the Terrebonne Lafouche Parish lines, we believe it will make landfall as a category two uh, and the forward speed of the hurricane at landfall uh, could be 20 miles per hour or greater. It's currently moving at about 18 miles per hour. We do expect Hurricane Zeta to continue to pose the greatest threats uh, because of wind. Um, and although the other uh, impacts that we always see from hurricanes will will also be experienced, but we do believe this is going to be primarily a wind event. Having said that, uh, we believe that tropical storm force winds are arriving on the Louisiana coast as we speak. All of southeast Louisiana uh, remains uh, at risk for, for wind damage, and this does include the greater New Orleans metropolitan area, uh, which will likely see winds uh, for some period of time uh, in the 100 mile per hour range, uh, but also north into St. Tammany Parish where they should expect uh, winds in the 90 mile per hour range. And those winds will be sustained. Uh, one of the good things about this storm, if there is such a thing as a good thing about the storm, is the forward speed will mean that it's not going to just sit there and pound um, for hour after hour uh, and, and it should move through uh, the area relatively quickly. I have had the opportunity this morning to speak with Mayor Cantrell of New Orleans, um, and she told me that uh, she believes the city is well prepared. Uh, I, be I believe that as well, and, and we, we believe that uh, overall, Southeast Louisiana is well prepared for uh, this particular storm. So just because it's primarily gonna be a wind event doesn't mean we won't have other impacts. So we do expect rain from two to four inches. Rain will be heavier in certain isolated areas depending upon whether rain bands uh, establish themselves and remain stationary for some uh, period of time. Um, we also know that, um, that there will be a storm surge uh, and the, me the measures that we've been told to expect uh, is less than, than some of the other storms, but if you have a storm surge warning, which we do, uh, by definition, that means that it's life-threatening. So it's to be taken seriously. Uh, right now, that storm surge is expected to be five to eight feet from Port Fouchon to the Mississippi River, uh, four to seven feet from the Mississippi River to the Pearl River, and that includes all of Lake Bourne, uh, four to six feet from Morgan City to Port Fouchon, uh, at Lake Pontchartrain should experience storm surge of between three and five feet, at Lake Maripal Mar between one and three. Uh, the greatest storm surge because of the um, direction that this uh, storm is, is uh, traveling and because it's, it's uh, kind of extended out on its right side, if you look at it, it's not a concentric uh, storm. It's, it's extended out on the right side, will be the Mississippi Gulf Coast. 
uh, where storm surge is expected between six and nine feet. Uh, there is an elevated risk of tornadoes. Uh, and I say this because everybody needs to be mindful of this, especially since this is gonna happen uh, for the most part after dark. Uh, it is important to have your phones charged and that you pay attention to any warnings that might come across the phone uh, alerting you to a tornado in your area. So Zeta is literally on our doorstep. Um, the weather is degrading quickly as we speak. Uh, so the truth of the matter is those people who are in the path of the storm, you need to be now uh, where you want to be uh, as, as you ride the storm out and get you and your family uh, in the best posture possible for the storm. Um, there are mandatory evacuations in place for parts of of uh, Jefferson, particularly Jean Lafitte, Lower Lafitte, Crown Point, Barataria, and Grand Isle, but also in Lafouche Parish, south of the Lee Ontario floodgate, and in Tangeville, I'm sorry, I'm from Tangeville Parish, in Terrebonne Parish, um, in Zone 1, which is the southern part of that parish outside of the protected uh, area. There are also uh, voluntary evacuations in place for portions of Orleans Parish, Lafouche Parish, and Plaquemines Parish. We currently have more than 1,500 guardsmen activated uh, and uh, preparing for this emergency and, and, and staging in order to respond uh, to the hurricane tomorrow. Uh, because the hurricane is gonna move quickly through the area, we believe that early tomorrow we'll be in a position to start our, our damage assessments, but also any necessary search and rescue uh, can be commenced early tomorrow, uh, and power restoration efforts uh, should be able to, be, uh, to begin tomorrow morning early as well. Uh, CPRA is tracking 689 gates uh, across the coastal zone. As of this morning, 290 gates are closed. That's up from 207 yesterday, and that's more than I told you to expect and that's because uh, we have had an increase in the intensity of the storm that's been forecasted. Uh, and they, we also had a little shift in the track yesterday as well. So we, we closed some additional gates. In the greater New Orleans region, slip for east and slip for west are closing major structures in the hurricane risk reduction system. Um, and they report that that system is fully operational. We believe that because this is gonna be a significant wind event that Louisianans uh, in Southeast Louisiana along the, the uh, track of the storm and particularly out to on the east side of the storm track uh, should expect power outages. Uh, they could be extensive. Uh, we know that there are more than 5,700 linemen uh, who are staged to begin uh, power restoration as quickly as possible uh, tomorrow, and I want to thank all of them for their diligence and effort. And should we need more uh, linemen than that, once we do the damage assessment, uh, then we will we will be bringing in additional linemen. Some of whom are actually in Texas uh, dealing with ice uh, today. Uh, and and by the way, it's the convergence of this hurricane uh, and that cold front that's actually accelerating the forward movement that's going to cause the hurricane to move so quickly uh, through the area. Obviously, we're concerned about um, any power outages that, that might not be easily and quickly uh, rectified and the impact that could have on the election next week. So we're already working with the Public Service Commission, but also with the individual electric companies, and those are being primarily Entergy, Clico, and Entergy New Orleans, so that we've identified in advance all of the polling locations uh, so that power restoration efforts can be prioritized there uh, in those locations so that we'll have the election without any issues on Tuesday. Uh, as you all know, er, in-person early voting uh, wrapped up yesterday, and between those votes that were cast and mail ballots already returned, uh, Louisiana uh, has, has voted, uh, almost one million Louisianans have voted, I should say, already. We close state offices in many parishes today at noon, and tomorrow uh, we, are, we already know that state offices are gonna be closed in the following parishes. Assumption, 
Jefferson, Lafouche, Orleans, Plaquemines, St. Bernard, St. Charles, St. James, St. John, St. Tammany, Tanchbahoa, Terrebonne, and Washington parishes. Uh, the situation with those individuals being sheltered from Hurricanes Laura and Delta did not change much at all overnight. Uh, we still have right at 3,600 Louisianans being sheltered. Uh, 3,403 are from Hurricane Laura, uh, and 3,277 of those are evacuees in seven hotels, five of which are in New Orleans, one in Baton Rouge, one in Lafayette. 126 evacuees from Hurricane Laura uh, remain at the Alexandria Mega Shelter, uh, and this includes medical special needs individuals. Uh, there are 157 Hurricane Delta evacuees, 153 of whom are in one New Orleans hotel, uh, and there are four in the Mega Shelter in Alexandria. So anyone needing uh, shelter from Hurricane Zeta uh, follow the guidance of your local officials. If you have any questions, call your Office of Emergency Preparedness uh, for your parish. If you need information about how to contact them, if you need a phone number, you can go to getagameplan.org. And always, if you have shelter uh, information needs, that, that uh, you, can, you can text LA Shelter to 898-211. That's LA Shelter to 898-211 or you can call 211 and get answers to your questions. Because we expect power outages and cool weathers com uh, coming in shortly thereafter, um, weather in the 40s in, in the, much of the affected area, uh, we do expect individuals uh, to be utilizing generators. We do encourage you to do that safely and in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions. Uh, in brief, please make sure that those generators are outdoors and 20 feet away from your home in a well-ventilated area and not underneath a vent, a window, next to a door, not in a crawl space, not in your garage, uh, and certainly not in your home. Uh, please allow the generators to cool down for at least 20 minutes before refueling them uh, to prevent a fire that, that could happen and in fact has happened. And so after the Hurricane Laura, I can tell you we had nine individuals died from carbon monoxide poisoning, uh, from improperly using those generators, and then we had other individuals uh, who were uh, harmed because of fires caused by refueling the generators while they were still hot. It's important to have a carbon monoxide and smoke detector in your home, so please get one if you don't. Make sure the batteries are fresh. Um, we also encourage you to remember to check 511LA.org for road closures. And please uh, make sure that you treat any down power lines as if uh, they are live uh, with electricity. Uh, finally today, before we take questions, a COVID update. Today we're reporting 503 cases on 14,478 new tests. Unfortunately, we're also reporting an additional 10 deaths for a total of 5,676. Hospitalizations are up today by 13. A uh, total of 613 individuals hospitalized across the state of Louisiana with COVID-19. Uh, ventilators are down by 11 from yesterday. We went from 91 to 80 mechanical ventilators in use uh, for COVID patients. As of October the 23rd, the percent positivity uh, for Louisiana is 5.07%. Uh, percent. Obviously, we want to be at 0%, uh, but the benchmark where you should really shoot to be is no higher than 5% because that really gives you the best chance of uh, slowing community uh, transmission. We have... Um, been able, uh, because of the cooperation of the people of Louisiana, to get through the two previous hurricanes and Labor Day and some other things without having surging cases in Louisiana. 
Uh, we really want that to be able to continue as we deal with Hurricane Zeta as well. So we encourage everyone to continue to follow all of the uh, mitigation measures that are in place and all the restrictions uh, that are, are in place so that we can, we can continue um, to be in a relatively good place anyway. Um, and I say that, but I just reported um, additional uh, deaths, 10 new deaths and, and more than 500 cases. Uh, but relatively speaking, if you compare and contrast us with other parts of the country, we're, we're doing uh, pretty well right now. Um, we uh, know that we, we continue to have more cases, more transmission, because of small informal gatherings, uh, at, typically at people's homes and in their backyards. And, and uh, I think it's just human nature. But we make a mistake when we think, well, that because this person is my neighbor or my close friend, uh, or a, a relative that, that they must not have COVID. And we let our guard down. We don't uh, physically distance. We, we don't wear the mask like we should. Um, and there's a lot of transmission from that here in Louisiana and elsewhere. And so we're asking people to be very careful uh, with that. Um, as we continue to prepare for and respond to this hurricane, it's, it's worth remembering that we're doing this in a COVID-19 uh, public health emergency environment. So it is critically important that we continue to wear our mask and uh, face coverings, that we physically distance from people when we're not from the same uh, immediate household, that we wash our hands frequently, uh, and that we stay home when we are sick. Uh, testing yesterday and today will be way down in terms of our community test sites. Uh, we hope and expect that the National Guard will very quickly stand up community testing sites once Hurricane Zeta uh, passes through and it's safe to do that. We always hate to, to lose our testing momentum because that, that gives us the best visibility into what uh, the uh, virus is doing in the state of Louisiana. So it's gonna be a rough evening for Louisiana, particularly in the, the southeastern uh, portion. I am confident that we are well prepared for this storm. Uh, I do hope that all the individual uh, families out there are, are prepared as well. Um, so please stay weather aware, listen to the guidance coming from your local officials, um, and let's make sure that we get through this as best we can, be safe, uh, be smart, uh, and, and let's pray for one another. And let's look forward to those opportunities tomorrow to be a good neighbor to those who are in need. Let's get there quickly, uh, let's get there safely, um, and, and let's make sure that while we're being a good neighbor as it relates to their needs from the hurricane, we're also being a good neighbor in making sure that we don't unnecessarily spread COVID-19. So with that, I'm going to take a few questions uh, from you if you have one. Yes, sir. Correct. That's what we were told a while ago um, uh, from the National Weather Service at the briefing is that we will have hurricane force winds along the storm track basically until it exits Louisiana into Mississippi. So even as it travels through uh, St. Tammany uh, Parish. Uh, and and this, this storm, uh, more than most, is expected to have the most significant impacts uh, right along the eye into the east and not uh, on the west side. However, we did expect that uh, in uh, Hurricane Delta too. Uh, and we had some very significant winds on the west side. Uh, in fact, all of Lake Charles was on the west side of that storm track uh, and it did receive significant uh, wind damage as well. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, and, and the, the communication, um, I, for whatever reason, it just, we, we weren't clear on what the situation was and, and so forth. Um, but shortly after the press conference yesterday, we were able to engage and I think get it clarified. I did uh, uh, speak uh, to the mayor this morning. Uh, and so I'm, I'm quite confident that, that we've got the situation uh, straight now. So all 99 pumps are operational. There are three turbines uh, that are also operational. 
along with the five generators that they have uh, and the uh, there's some other devices down there frequency frequency changers uh, that will be enough to power all 99 pumps uh, and where, where, where we don't have uh, power generation capacity that we would like it is to provide a redundant source of power um, should should one of the turbines go down um, but we believe that as the storm approaches New Orleans has the power generation capacity to operate all the pumps uh, that shouldn't be a problem and the other news is that we're only expecting two to four inches of rain uh, and and should that uh, be the case then we shouldn't have any real issues related to flooding in, in the city of New Orleans. Um, and as I mentioned yesterday, there, there are times when afternoon thunderstorms visit more rain on New Orleans than that. Um, so, so that's the situation as we understand it. Um, and and I, think, I think things are well under control. Any other questions? So tomorrow, yes, ma'am, I'm sorry. No, uh, uh, and we, we still have our mega shelter open and it's, it's a processing center so people sh show up there. We will keep them there no longer than, than necessary, but we don't have anybody from Zeta there. We do have uh, parishes that have ordered evacuations uh, that are opening their own shelters and that's where people should go to first. And then hopefully they're gonna be in a position to go right back home uh, once the storm passes, if that's not possible. Uh, then we will be uh, making uh, arrangements for those individuals uh, to shelter as, as well. And, and then the focus will remain on sheltering um, in non-congregate shelters, uh, hotel rooms, because of the COVID-19 environment. Any other questions? So tomorrow we're going to have a UCG meeting at about 9 o'clock in the morning. Um, we do expect uh, to have a, a media availability it may be relatively brief when that meeting is complete and perhaps on our way to helicopters uh, should we see the need to go and and, uh, and get our eyes on damaged areas and so i would just ask you to pay attention to information that will be coming out of the communications office uh, later today about what that will look like uh, but we do anticipate having an opportunity to speak to all of you tomorrow before we take off uh, and and go uh, to southeast Louisiana uh, and, and see what the damage is like. So with that, thank you again for covering this. Uh, I encourage everybody uh, in southeast Louisiana to take this storm seriously, uh, to, to make sure that you're not out and about uh, sightseeing, that you get to where you want to be to ride this storm out, uh, and that tomorrow we look for opportunities to be good neighbors to one another. And I know that you all will do that. Uh, so, so be safe and God bless.